I feel a little guilty about uh, being a, a member of Claring because it makes the map expand. I don't know if you've seen the map of Claring, and you have these nice little uh, spots in Europe, and it would be a very pretty map, but then suddenly you have this place over in North America, and that makes it so Europe gets much smaller. So maybe I would suggest we take away the Atlantic, and that would, you know, we could do that, sort of cut it like a little piece, of, rip up the piece of paper on the map there. Um, but anyway, we are uh, at uh, CMU in Pittsburgh uh, in the Talkbank Center, um, actually a Clarin B Center, but I guess the only one outside of Europe. Uh, so I thought it would be good to sort of explain, you know, and, and discuss what is the relation between TalkBank and Claring, um, and how can we, uh, you know, interoperate better, and what resources we have, um, you know, what we're, what we're really doing in, in the TalkBank project. So, you know, we really are addressing on the generally more psycholinguistic questions. I'm a psycholinguist, and so the work has been psycholinguistically uh, motivated. Also, though, some sociolinguistic questions and, uh, you know, these very basic issues about language, how is it learned, and even how it has evolved. Uh, but probably most of the data is on the language learning, language usage side. Um, all spoken language, so we're really not really focusing on text, uh, text corpora, except in, in one of these projects, which actually I, I had a poster on yesterday. Um, so the areas that um, we have been covering, the area that we began with was child language. We have the child's data system. Uh, child language data exchange system, uh, and that has extended into several other areas in child language. Uh, the Fond Bank is a new project that looks specifically at child uh, phonology development. Uh, there's also uh, a lot in narrative, uh, and bilingual has uh, child language development has been a very big area in the last maybe, might say, 10 years. Um, a second kind of line of database development is in uh, clinical applications, which is, I think, interestingly, almost totally absent within Claring. So that might be a really interesting kind of area to discuss. Um, you know, and you would say, well, maybe that's not humanities, but it is, um, um, and maybe more social science. But it's also very much applied to uh, health professions, speech and hearing, and so on. So we have a aphasia bank. Um, it's about 10 years old now. Uh, our brand new project called Fluency Bank, which would look uh, at things like stuttering, but also other disfluencies in Parkinson and so on, and in second language learning, and actually in children in general. So, so actually, we all have disfluencies. So, so that you know, it's it's really something that can be studied quite generally. But there are you know specific fluency problems in certain cases. Well, stuttering is the obvious one. Um, dementia. Uh, is uh, sort of under-resourced right now, but we probably will be doing more in that area, and a rather large uh, growing database in uh, traumatic brain injury. So all these are different clinical uh, issues are related. Uh, in, in, often some of the same symptoms occur. Within aphasia, you also have apraxia of speech and, uh, uh, and uh, other types of uh, language disorders, really. So a third area is uh, monolingual adult uh, language. Here, uh, CA Bank, a lot in conversation analysis, uh, specifically one bank that uh, it was in DK Klaren called Samtalabank is the uh, conversation bank of Danish. Um, we also have uh, things in uh, class bank, studying uh, classroom interactions, uh, and some mild uh, uh, set of, of, uh, of uh, resources for gesture study. Um, then there a general area of multilingualism. Uh, the uh, bilingual, biling bank, and SLA bank are uh, growing quite rapidly. Um, and there's also maybe not so much corpus development, but sort of online methods for instruction. That's sort of maybe outside of what Clarin is currently doing, but might be something that Clarin wouldn't uh, consider getting into in the future. Is uh, actually uh, online resources for language learning. 
Okay, so those are, within those areas, we have some projects funded right now, for example, like, there is no funding for the CA work, but you know, people are very interested in it, and the funding is mostly from the National Institute of Health, but also from NSF, and then we have that one project uh, I discussed yesterday, which is the National Endowment for the Humanities and the uh, Deutsche Forschungsgesellschaft for, for, for the German part. Um, and so it's interesting to look at this, it, to compare the Childs Project, which has been running for 28 years, and in terms of millions of words, you know, something like almost 60 million words, perhaps more, about three terabytes of media data. Um, much of this is linked to the transcripts, so audio, video is linked on the sentence level to the transcripts. Uh, 41 languages, and then I think probably the most important thing from Clarion to think about is the number of publications that have been based on this database is, is 7,000, perhaps more, growing all the time. Uh, uh, of course, the older the project, the more the you know the more you're going to have. But um, I think that Clarion really has to uh, consider how many publications are really coming from the work. And I think they're probably more than than people realize when you when you get into thinking about all the the, the ways in which uh, Clarion resources are used. Um, and the number of users, numbers of web hits, we're up to four million now uh, since we began measuring in 2003, probably somewhat more. But you know, the curve of web hits is really, really almost exponential. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and so these same numbers then apply with, for the more recent projects, um, uh, sometimes lower numbers. Uh, for example, Fondbank really does have a large number, but you know, this most recent project with the, the Latin and the German, well, we, we, had four, we had four publications, but now actually we have 12 now, so these things you know, change quite qu quickly, but uh, it, it's worth you know, looking at these facts. Uh, within uh, uh, Childs and TalkBank, we have 41 languages. I just put Cantonese here as an example because uh, so we have such an excellent child language uh, uh, corpus from Cantonese. Um, the, uh, so the principles that we are go going by, are, I, I was very happy to see how Orto Lang and uh, Chris, you know, Christoph Paris and I have worked together often, uh, has really come together in many of the same principles that we have were for particularly emphasizing open access. And to some degree, maybe, maybe another important principle is the community-driven nature of what we're doing, that you know, we're really responding to people in a physiology, child language, in fluency studies, uh, in conversation analysis, trying to make tools that are specific to that, that, that type of community interest and really uh, some of these projects actually are run by some of the leaders of those communities. For example, Aphasia Bank is run by, not run by, but is sort of motivated by Audrey Holland, who's a you know, great aphasia researcher and, 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 and so on. Okay. We have a standard format for all the data, which makes it rather easier to, to do analyses. Uh, you know, every piece of data is in this uh, uh, chat format with, for which there's an XML, uh, a very tight definition uh, can be validated and so on uh, and converted also to the phonology level. The, the phonology uh, analysis in FON, there's a FON program called FON, is completely integrated in with the XML for the chat, which is the more transcription oriented. Um, and as I say, all these transcripts, as much as possible, are linked to media. They're also uh, tagged and uh, also uh, 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 grammatically an analyzed with dependency parsing. The, the, the uh, data can be interoperable with R, Elan, Prot, uh, a thing called SALT, which I imagine you guys don't use, but it's in speech and hearing. It's the, a major format. Uh, the ANIS uh, corpus analysis system, conlo formats. We're, for ASR, we are working with Florian Metz at CMU, who uses this uh, Caldi-based speech kitchen setup. And uh, we're also dealing with a, uh, a system called Lena that has 24 hour a, a day recording uh, set up. So, uh, and within our FON project, uh, which is part of CLAN, uh, we've actually incorporated all of PROT, so it actually runs inside, inside FON. Uh, so some of the, obviously we've accepted all Clarion principles, all the in common login, but I notice I misspelled shibboleth, so I guess I probably would have my head cut off. 
you know what sibyl if you don't say sibyleth right you get your head cut off but um yeah i, I miss the h oh well okay that was a joke you didn't get okay <laughs> Uh, well, so, yeah, and all the OAI and stuff. One thing we've done, I guess, uh, I know there was a sort of dispute about should we do, uh, you know, handle server or what, but we've actually decided to do both of these systems, so we have DOI and handle server and all that stuff. Um, and we really would like to function as much as we can as a Claren K center. Uh, really like to be able to provide information on spoken language and this type of transcript analysis uh, that we do. So we hope to be able to really participate in that way. Um, and as I said, the, the, the Samtala Bank is one illustration of you know, total in, uh, integration of our work with, uh, with DK Clarin. Uh, so actually, I, I was hoping I could actually cl click on these things, but I realize I can't because I don't have a touch screen. I don't have my computer. But I would have. Well, I would have gone on each, and I probably don't have time anyway, but I would have, uh, <laughs> you know, clicked on each of these pages and gone to the website. So these are all, you know, separate web servers for all, each of these sort of uh, separate projects, and uh, yeah, that would be fun if I had time. Okay. Uh, maybe discuss some of our major methods that people use, and, you know, as you say, 7,000 articles. I mean, they're not all based on, you know, m many of them are really... Uh, very much count-based, uh, almost corpus analysis, but other, other methods are in there too. Uh, so within corpus analysis, you know, just the basic tools, but they're, they're rather finely developed for the purposes of, of child language, second language learning researches. Uh, we, we actually would like to wrap this, some of these things as web services. You can run them on a web page along with a corpus, but we'd like, I think we'd like to wrap them up a little bit better. So that would be a nice thing to consider. Um, this uh, Lena to chat conversion. So the Lena is, um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Deb Roy's, uh, you know, 24 hour a day video of his child's development. And I think the only thing that's really published was the development of the word water, which is really quite interesting. But um, this is a really big um, sort of new wave in child language, but not just child language, but some various other systems where, you know, you can really now, uh, even with a USB stick, record, you know, six days of audio, and, uh, the, you know, the quality is not maybe absolutely perfect, but really not bad, and uh, now the question is, you know, what do we do with all this audio? <laughs> so some of it, we have privacy concerns with some of it, but uh, this is, you know, so this is the home bank project, and uh, we hope to extend this in many, many ways, actually, so, um, yeah. So looking under the hood a little bit on the sort of the language technology stuff, um, really some of this is almost uh, homegrown uh, technology because we really had to develop methods that were specific for child language and bilingual interactions. Uh, so we built our own taggers basically for these uh, uh, 11 languages um, that are the, you know, the largest represented in the database. And, and then for about five of them, we also have the dependency parser, which is just a matter of time, of course, to build those. Um, so these are more declarative uh, taggers than, say, uh, uh, the FST type of framework. Uh, the part of speech is, you know, somewhat tuned to each language, particularly, say, Japanese, Hebrew, or rather different. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think you would find this system rather unfamiliar, but actually it doesn't require any programming on the user's part. And we have had people building them recently for additional languages. For example, we've almost got the Dutch one done now. Uh, we, for English, we have actually 98.5 accuracy and so on. Uh, you know, decent set for German and so on. Okay. Well, one thing that we're also allow these systems is that we can do bilingual transcripts, morphology. Uh, so the system is set up so that it can pull out each language because they're tagged in different ways. And uh, I, I think actually the tagging that we use to separate, you know, in these code switching, particularly uh, code switching interactions, uh, is not only useful for the for the tagger to work, but also for the uh, uh, for the uh, analyst to understand uh, where are the where are the switches made in terms of the theory of code switching and so on. Um, we can have a web service that we use to see the dependency graphs, uh, which is kind of nice. Double click, and you can see each sentence, and you know how how it's uh, how it's related. Um, okay, so 
getting into another type of analysis that we've been doing more in the last couple of years, this is more oriented towards uh, clinical practitioners who will have somebody come into their clinic and maybe take a language sample and they then transcribe it, and they want to know how does this, uh, you know, uh, 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 person who's they're trying to diagnose, their, their patient, you might say, uh, how are they doing vis-a-vis -vis some target group? What type of aphasia might they have? Are they uh, a young child who's uh, uh, language disordered, or are they actually within the normal range? And so there are all sorts of tests that are available within speech and hearing for this type of thing, and we basically wrap them all together in a thing called eval and kid eval, so eval is for the aphasics and kid eval is for child uh, evaluation. And it's basically a single button that you press once you have the transcript. Um, and it includes, of course, all a wide variety of measures. And for each measure, you get a standard deviation of, of your current sample uh, against the wider population. Uh, the, the wider population you know, are from our database. So you know, here's a, just an interface for eval. And here's the output, which is you know, enormous numbers of numbers, which actually clinicians really do value because they want to be able to you know, say that they've really done a thorough uh, analysis of, of the profile of this child. Um, and all of this is automatic. Um, you can either, you know, go down in the, in the clinical side, you can go down either the pathway of going from transcription through this morphological analysis into Kidival. And if you want to do phonology, you go down this other pathway, you convert your transcript uh, and eventually go into FON and, and do Pratt type analysis. Uh, we also have systems for error analysis. Um, and th this is by hand. There is not automatic an error, error analysis. Uh, and actually, I don't have a slide, but there's also a, a series of uh, analyses, some of them automatic for disfluency. Uh, so the third area is more the microanalysis area, conversation analysis, that type of thing. Um, and here, we, of course, have to have video. Um, well, I should say, of course, you know, a lot of conversation analysis was done by phone calls, but more and more people are relying on, on video. Is that over time or under time? No, over time. Oh, my God. Okay. So a little over time. And uh, so uh, we, we interface with Elon, which is a really great way of looking at some of the gestural analysis, but uh, we can go back and forth automatically to Elon and uh, to Pratt and to, here's Fond, all these, and then also making more and more use of ANIS, the corpus uh, analysis system uh, from Anke Lüling in, in uh, uh, Berlin, and uh, actually we can put all of Childs in ANIS now. Um, and we have these systems for CA coding, uh, so that we actually represent all of the CA conventions and, and, and some more, uh, using uh, mostly additional Unicode characters. Uh, we have a system for going into greater gesture detail than even you could do in Elan, but boy, gesture is so much work. Oh, goodness. And of course, discourse analysis and uh, output. Most people want output to Excel, but some of you, I think you mentioned, in, was it in the Polish project or the Swedish one that you output to R? And we have developed for certain types of uh, data out, uh, you know, uh, scripts for outputting to R. One system we're, we've had developed, and we actually reported it once upon a time at LREC, and, and people never used, was a thing called collaborative commentary, but we're now resurrecting this because it turns out people really finally have realized that they need this, which is essentially blogging on corpora, and uh, mostly oriented towards teachers uh, using it with their students. Okay, so what messages for clarion? I think the importance of open access is probably the most important message. Um, I, I am a fan of uniform transcription format. I'm sure there's lots of disagreement on that issue. Uh, but it, it, for, from a user's point of view, I think it's great to not have to have dealing with myriads of transcription formats. And uh, I think also the idea of focusing on specific research communities uh, is important not only for corpus development and tool development, but very important for funding. So, <laughs> so maybe capitalize funding, right? So my conclusions are we need to, of course, always expand TalkBank. Uh, I would hope that Claring could make wider use of TalkBank methods and that we could make more use of Claring and uh, we could promote more TalkBank Claring integration. Okay, thank you. Sorry I went over. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much for the talk and very, very inviting message at the end. Okay, <laughs> we'll yeah, try to no, use of it. Course, yeah. <laughs> Please, questions, five minutes, please, Jan. Oh. 
Um, as you are aware, I okay. have been working on parsing Dutch uh, yeah. childless corpora, and we are also partially manually correcting these parses because it, of course, generates automatically. Now, the important thing of parsing uh, these things is that it allows you to search much better in the in the data. But do you have already facilities to search in uh, tree banks, uh, or can well, we? Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, for if, as soon as they're in Anus, this is of course what, you use what they're doing. That. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. well, we haven't really because we can search even with our tools. Uh, to be honest, I, I mean, sometimes you adopt other tools just to show you're you're a you're a good colleague and a you know a, what do you play a, a, a player you know a good player along with other people i'm sure there's an english word i can't find it but um yeah um uh, no i think there's no problem searching okay. we, we have lots of programs for that um and and they run you know over a huge amount of data so well, we, yeah. we use some tools uh, one tool from groningen and one tool from made by yeah no the more, yeah and and i I guess the, the thing would be if the tool were actually adapted to our format, that would be optimal, but, but some of our tools, I, we, I mean, we'd have to look, but I don't think tools for searching are a problem at all. Okay, yeah. thank you. I mean, I know they're not because people are using them all the time. It's, it's just a huge thing, yeah. More question? Yes. Um, I was wondering, uh, you were mentioning the database for aphasia and dementia. Yeah, and also mentioning that everything is open access. Yeah, but that means well, that open. I'm sorry. So aphasia is the one area that does have a password. Ah, yeah. Okay. Um, and actually, TBI, the clinical areas, uh, TBI, they're, they're extremely easy to get. Okay, and uh, so the, we give the passwords to the faculty member, and then the students are allowed at, you, to use that same password that the faculty. Uh, uses and honestly, I would really like to see a little bit more. We, we've had a little trouble with password integration with Claring. Uh, we we did implement Shibboleth and single sign-on, but then it just didn't function. We never was tested. But I, I think that's a great model, and I would like to almost make it so that you know the 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 access is through uh, Shibboleth and and in common. And but um, but yes, there you do have to. But we give you a password within moments, so it's really. I mean. You know. No, no, I, I was just yeah. surprised because yeah. that in, in yeah. Europe sometimes it is quite difficult to have this kind of data. Uh, uh, yeah, I, no, certainly, and I mean, I'm not, it's not, you know, Nirvana over in the U.S. either, you know. I mean, we, have, we, we, we battle to maintain op open access okay. and to make sure people will contribute. Uh, I, I'd say we're somewhat better off in the U.S. Uh, mm, it depends on what. I mean, Spain has been pretty open, I think, and they've contributed enormous amounts, but then... You know, Germany seems to have problems sometimes in Sweden. So there are certain countries in the in Europe that are, are you know have a little bit more problems. But but you know, really, it, it's it's case by case. It really is. And in any way, if the more the thing about aphasia, yeah, we we've collected a lot of that data using a, a, a standard protocol. That's the other thing to understand about that. That it it uh, not all of the data, but but there's like you know 500 aphasics all answering the same questions across a one hour interview about their life and of describing pictures. So that's an extremely well-organized uh, database. Some of the others, you know, much more opportunistic. So it really depends, yeah. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, sure. And one more question. Three more questions, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, about your fixed format. I fully agree with you that having a fixed format is, is ideal because uh, then you have to make only one set of tools or every tool uh, has to uh, take into account yeah. only one format. So that's optimal. But of course, your focus is very specific and therefore you can have a single... Uh, well, is it so specific? I mean, look at how many areas we're talking about. Uh, but it's still, it's always, let's say, language, transcriptions of language, transcriptions of dialogues. So it's, but yeah, yeah, if you yeah, look at Clarin more generally, this, it's this much more wider. So I think we need, I, I'm, I'm afraid yeah, yeah, we will sure. need more, multiple, uh, multiple forms. Oh, oh, Maybe for, not as many as there are now, but still multiple. Well, for sure, when we're doing, when we're doing uh, you know, Caesar's Gallic Wars, we're not using conversation analysis anymore. Yeah, right, yeah. So, in, and geography and so on. But, uh, but the area of spoken language is a pretty big area, I'd say. Yeah. And the last question was uh, from Beck. In, in terms of Clarin um, integration, is there a way now to access TalkBank data through federated content? Well, I just mentioned that. I said that, that, that it, 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 we implemented our side, but I don't think it's implemented back over, you know, maybe Dieter and other people will tell us what happened, but uh, I mean, I did what I could. And I did it, and it was okay, sort, sorry, it sort of worked. <laughs> you know, it sort of worked. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I figured other people should worry about this. What's that? Is that federated content search? I heard you talk oh, about Oh, federated shibboleth. content search. No, that yeah. was single sign, SSO. No, oh. Uh, 
Well, we have, of course, all the SIMD. Well, I'm not quite sure, you know, I'm not sure what the, the, the next level down would be on the federated content search. You mean down to the level of the word? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 not really. Yeah. Okay. It's, we don't have, unfortunately, okay. more time. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much once again. Very inspiring.